Can someone explain? Sure, let's take a look. Here we have this picture and it says, I turn 20, my daughter turns 1 today, look what my dad did. Here we have these two blooms. The first one in the sh is in the shape of a 2, and the second one is in the shape of 0. But the 0 is in the top right corner and is also much smaller. Well, first, we have 2 and 0, so if you put them together, they look like 20. However, once we place the 0 right here and smaller, this becomes a math question. This is an exponent question. As a quick review, the big number 2 right here, this is called the base. And then the top right corner here, the small number, is called an exponent, or also called as a power. You can say this as 2 to the power of 0, or 2 to the exponent 0. Okay, so what does this mean though? It's kind of strange though, because what does the 0's exponent mean? Usually when we have exponents, let's say we have 2 to the 4th power. This 4 tells us how many times that we have to write down the base. So 4 times this case, so 2, 2, 2, 2. But the answer is not 2,222. We have to multiply that. So little baby x is like this. And then worked out. 2 times 2 is 4, times another 2 is 8, times 1 more 2 is 16. So 16 is the answer for 2 to the 4th power. But what's the zeroth power though? Well, use the same logic. That means we don't write down any 2, so the answer should just be equal to 0. Well, in fact, no. 2 to the zeroth power is not equal to 0. Hmm. Maybe we can use a calculator. Sure thing, you can go ahead and use the calculator. But here is actually the reason of how we can get the answer on the calculator. Why don't we try some other numbers? Instead of 2 to the 4th power, let's look at 2 to the 3rd power. Now, this 3 means that we write down the 2 3 times. 2, 2, 2. And then we multiply them. 2 times 2 is 4 times another 2 is 8. Good. Continue. If we do 2 to the 2nd, that means we write down this 2 2 times. And then multiply them. 2 times 2, we get 4. Good. Do you see the pattern? 4, 3, 2. Yes, I'm doing this on purpose. The next one is going to be 1. 4, 3, 2, 1, of course. But the 1 tells us to write down the 2 one time. And that's it. Okay. Now, what's 2 to the 0? It's coming right here. 2 to the 0. The pattern follows, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, yeah, it's the jet. But what's the answer though? If you look at the answers right here, we have 16, 8, 4, and 2. And what's the answer? Well, what's the pattern though from 16 to 8, from 8 to 4, from 4 to 2? Do not say minus 8, because we have to make sure the rule works for the next one as well. So. If you look at from 16 to 8 as dividing by 2, does that work for the rest? Yes, 8 divided by 2 does give us 4. 4 divided by 2 does give us 2. And then you know it. I know you know it. Take the 2 and then divide it by 2. 2 divided by 2, of course we get a 1. Ladies and gentlemen, 2 to the zero's power is equal to 1. And when you place the balloon that way, you see 2 and 0, so it shows 20. But mathematically, this right here gives you 1. So you have 20 and also 1 in the same picture. Very cool, huh? Wait, don't go yet, because I just thought about this. What if we continue? We don't have to stop at 0, right? So. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. The next number will be negative 1. So we are talking about 2 to the negative 1 power. Well, if we see 2 and negative 1, the answer should just be negative 2, right? Well, the answer is no. This is actually not correct. In fact, this is a super common mistake when people first see negative exponents. Remember, we still have to follow the pattern. So to figure out 2 to the negative 1, 
we'll take the 1, this number here, the previous number, and then divide it by 2. It's being always divided by 2. 1 divided by 2, we get 1 half. So in fact, when we have the negative 1 exponent, 2 to a negative 1, we actually get 1 over 2. We get a fraction. And if you want to keep going, the next number will be negative 2. Does this work? Yes. Again, you divide this by 2. 1 half divided by 2, we get a quarter. And that is the same as 1 over 4. Just like that. Very cool, huh?